And here we are for the last game of the evening, the last match, the last series, whatever you want to call it, uh, spawning on Frozen Temple and the top left position in green. Playing for Team Gravity, we have Poison. Playing for the NA as well. The uh, United States, not only the NA server, uh, the United States. And to the bottom right, in purple, playing Terran for Clan LDLC and France, it's Miyako. So Miyako, definitely the favorite in this match. I hate to say it that bluntly, but yeah, she hasn't lost a single map uh, in this season. Uh, going for a proxy barracks right uh, here. Actually, interesting uh, place to put it right behind those rocks. Uh, she's probably going to fly it across the rocks once it's finished, I think. Normally you don't want to make your units waddle around this path if you just can have them right here. Uh, I don't think that Reavers will jump over these rocks as well. Of course, Reavers will have a short time... Uh, Reapers, not Reavers. Reapers will have a shorter time just uh, moving across this part of the map. But it's actually quite an interesting position. I've never seen any Terran building uh, the proxy racks right behind those rocks. That doesn't mean actually that much. Um, because I'm not watching every single StarCraft game there is. Oh, and even going for the Ghost Academy right behind it. So it's the infamous early ghost build um, with a cloak, probably, which can actually really win you the game. It can be a build auto win if your opponent doesn't scout it and uh, or prepares for it blindly by just sheer luck. So yeah, um, uh, you normally just uh, want to build ghosts early on that cloak. And if your opponent just doesn't have any kind of detection for the cloak ghost, you just immediately win. Because there's not much you can do against it. So first Reaper moving in. Okay, now like I said, she's just moving the barracks over here and adding the tech lab in order to get some ghosts out. So here's cloak already being in production. So doing a lot of harassment already with uh, her little Reaper over here, trying to keep the opponent busy and occupy it so they won't think too much about what is actually coming and as we can see thus far poison hasn't even thought about just um searching for opponent i think maybe just maybe this is miyako's personal revenge because she just hates protoss mtt rushes and i think she just wants to pay a protoss back uh, by building early cloaked units and make a Protoss see how fucking annoying this can be for a Terran to have to deal with this. And again, it's the same mistake. It looks as if two uh, ghosts were being trained at once from this barrack, which is actually not possible and not happening. But it's just an overlay mistake. We had this in the Mitsukotsu game as well, where Miyako built a lot of uh, ghosts in the late game in order to deal with the Ultralisks. So, yeah. Quite interesting. Okay, we have at least some chance of detection out here. It's a Stargate with an Oracle. But of course, if the units move in and the Oracle is just across the map, maybe even using the laser that also takes some energy, um, it might be problematic. But n right now, sh Poison might even be able to at least get a look at the at the units. So there is the cloak, and now nothing that uh, Poison can actually really do against it. Uh, Miyako even trying to take down the Mothership Core as soon as possible, not really getting it. There's the Oracle just now revealing the units, so now the cloak doesn't uh, work anymore for I think about a minute or half a minute. Well, we'll see how long it's going to take. But of course there's still not many units there in order to um, push that off. And as you can see, Ghosts are very potent against Adepts here. So maybe Ghost opening the new meta against Adepts? Probably not. But already L11, uh, 11 pro skills. Now the ghosts start dying with their infamous scream. Yeah! And there they die. Okay, another ghost incoming. Of course, the Oracle doesn't have infinite amounts of um, infinite amounts of energy. Now has to just stay back a little bit. Poison just has to be patient here. Okay, just one ghost coming in at a time, trying to kill even more units. 18 workers have already died by that. Um, in the meantime, Miyako just realizes that she won't end the game right there and then, since her opponents uh, managed to get some detection out. And now Oracle just barbecuing 
And that little ghost down here. Okay, one more ghost incoming. Yeah, actually there it is. Still more painful and pesky harassment by Miyako here. Yeah, that's just her specialty. I mean, if you followed Miyako's games throughout the season, you already know that she's a very aggressive, very annoying player. We even created the nickname that she should change uh, the LDLC tech to BAAF, being annoying as fuck Miyako, because that's just her specialty. 25 probes now dead. 26 and even more incoming while in the meantime, like I said, um, yeah, maybe, maybe she will even still be able to um, finish that game over here. Even throwing down a nuke at that Nexus. Uh, yeah, I think Poison should realize that there is a nuke incoming. So she will. Will she? No, she won't. Oh my god. Oh, killing off the rest of the probes over here. GG and Miyako takes the first game. So, we're back for the second game of the series. It's New Gettysburg. Poison deliberately chose New Gettysburg because uh, the loser of the last match always chooses the next map. And uh, she spawned to the bottom left hand side in green. And to the bottom right in purple we have our Terran Miyako. Who just surprised a lot of people in chat with her ghost first opening, cloaked ghost opening, that actually just did so much damage to an actually blindly prepared poison, but she just didn't have the means to stop Miyako from getting in again and again and again, just destroying workers left and right. It was painful to watch and uh, she finally managed to get the win with it. So, Probe already sneaking across the bridge towards the Terran base. I think this time Poison wants to get a better scout off than last time. <laughs> Doesn't want to stay blind for that long. Uh, because, uh, although it didn't really, I mean, I mean, the, the, the bad scouting didn't really cost her the game. Because, like I said before, she just blinds. She just blindly had some uh, observers in place, or at least some detection in place with the Oracle. Okay, nicely done, even here. Just being just, just being annoying right back at Miyako. <laughs> Actually quite interesting that Miyako now even decides to build the command center up here. A lot of Terrans then just decide to build the command center just a little bit to the left or to the right of the pylon in order to just having to lift it up here and then just planting it down there so that it, won't but it will take less time to plant the command center at where it needs to be. But uh, yeah, in this, this case, maybe Mia could just realize that her opponent wants to be some sort, wants to be more aggressive, just uh, just wants to get annoying right back at her. And uh, maybe that's why she decided to build it up here in the safety of her own base. Well, Poison's Nexus, own Nexus is already done. So I'm really looking forward to what Poison is up to and if she will be able to take a map off of Miyako because she would be the first to do so. So having the proxy pylon already in position. Is this proxy pylon, uh, are these are these bushes just, I think this proxy pylon is totally blocking that bridge, right? Yeah, it should be. I think this pylon over here should totally block it. So I think Poison is going to uh, build a a warp gate over here so that she will be able to do some warp ins here and then just put some early aggression on Miyako. Let's see how this is going to work. Maybe with a lot of adepts even. So we'll see. But there's a Stargate already incoming so it seems as if Poison just wants to ramp up the aggression with Oracles as well. Trying to kill some of her workers this time around. So yeah. Epic grudge, ma uh, epic grudge match uh, game 2 coming up here it seems. So Miyako in the meantime going for a 1-1-1 one, one, one build, having early access to mines and a starport. So again, these ladies just playing the way David Kim wants to see the game, because as we all know, some of the best moments in StarCraft 2 come from worker harassment. <laughs> and it seems as if both ladies just want to do David the favor by building um, the most annoying units for harassment in the game. <laughs> so we see who takes, um, who gets the better of it. 
that's actually uh, what we have to wait for. Mirko just going uh, to search for some sort of proxy place, probably just trying to get Gisela Nagatawa, or just checking for... Oh, actually, she's really checking for a hidden uh, gold base, a uh, ninja gold base, but Poison is just taking the usual uh, third nexus between four and five minutes. Typical timing. So now the first two Agepts uh, will arrive at Mirko's base, but there's a bunker already in position. Of course, uh, they can always shade away, and in this case the ramp is already. Oh, Poison has to be careful not to lose her adept right there, that would be too easy. Oh, and Mirko just manages to waltz off right at the last moment, uh, planting down that last supply depot. So Poison just missed uh, the opportunity barely, and didn't even realize that her units were... Um, or that the AI distracted her shades over here. Uh, she actually probably thought that she would come uh, somewhere over here. But Miyako already has a widow mine in place that even shot at something, probably at the same time while she was doing the harassment down here. She flew in the Oracle, but it seems as if it got shot down because this uh, mine has one kill. So unfortunately, mine plus turret just denied most of um, poisons harassment play there, while in the same time, well, I actually missed the action, I'm totally sorry, uh, Poison has again lost 16 workers back here with a mind drop that Mia could it at the same time. Wow, too many things happening at both ends of the map, I'm really sorry I couldn't show you everything, but even as an observer you can only be at one point, uh, at one location at a time. But yeah, that's actually what happened while Poison was trying to do some harassment over here with her oracle. The uh, turret in combination with the mine just shot it down. At the same time, Miyako just managed to get her mines into the mineral field of Poison, killing off over 16 workers. Yeah, 16 workers by now. So yeah, uh, now we know who got the better end of that harassment plan. But Poison is still on three bases, that's of course something good right now, but Miyako knows about the third base and is directing her medevac with one more mine uh, she took right here from the turret um, into the third base in order to get more damage done and more um, more damage done and more mining denied, while in the meantime we have Poison going for resonating glaives and a Void Ray push. It seems as if she really wants to, again, ramp up the aggression against her opponent as soon as possible. There's still two Adepts over here that um, will probably help cancelling or help avoiding that base for just a few more seconds. Um, so once the first few workers move out in order to build that base, we know it's just flying. So yeah, there's already a mine walking across this map as well. So well, Miyako just barely not getting the mine buried. A uh, bird, sorry. So where's the? Okay, it looks like uh, the medevac got fund get fended off. There it is. Okay, yeah, and the widow mine got just shot down by the stalkers before it could burrow, obviously. So nothing gained over here. Uh, Adept just shooting down on some marines. The command center got planted. Now even turning into a planetary fortress. So Miyako really wants to be safe against DTs, which are Poison's trademark. So I think that's really a wise plan. Everybody knows that Poison calls herself the DT Queen. So if you play against her, you should know that DTs are a valid option. So uh, I think Miyako really doesn't want to take the trouble of fighting off DTs uh, at our third base. So in the meantime we have um, more mines being dropped down here, even one widow mine getting more killed, so Miyako really getting uh, a high worth out of it, now even killing another stalker with a widow mine that's still over here. Yeah, the oracles just don't cut it uh, when it comes to detection, because they often can only cover one area with uh, the first few energy, and then they have to collect more energy in order to throw down another revelation spell. So, hmm, uh, an observer definitely the better choice for, for, for detection, because it detects continuously. So, Planetary Fortress down here, so um, probably no choice for DTs to make anything happen. I mean, this missile terror can get counter repaired, and the AoE damage of Planetary Fortresses just kills DTs pretty easily. So, nothing done down here. Okay, Budamon's still in position. Finally, it gets revealed, and now it gets taken down. And finally, Poison has her main base mineral line back to herself. So another uh, medevac already coming in, and here is the problem with the AI I was talking about in an earlier match this evening, uh, how the uh, air barriers just keep um, 
uh, just keep distracting the uh, the AI. Okay, just Mirko just unburrows, just uh, unloads and burrows some more of the mines. Bam, getting even more kills over here. How many probes have been killed in this game? Wow, 23 workers killed by Mirko thus far, taking a fourth base up here. So, but the um, uh, but the uh, medevac at least gets taken down by this photon overcharge here. So, but still, I mean, Poison now, uh, bit by bit, getting behind in supply, getting behind in bases. She doesn't have a fourth base even in construction, while her opponent is halfway done with hers. I think Poison might not even, well, she surely doesn't know, but might not even expect a fourth base at that time. We have the Behemoth Reactor in placement. It's time for the Fusion Core Dance. Everybody does it. Woo! The fusion core dance, the behemoth reactor, so we're probably going to see some cattle bruisers in this match. Okay, so Miyako really switching up to air toss, uh, to, to air terran, to sky terran. In this case, it's mostly going to be banshees and vikings. Bam, another widowman shot just hits this void ray over here. A uh, few adepts and DTs down here as well. So Mirko just flies out and finally Poison realizes what her opponent has been building up to all the time. And I don't think she's really prepared for everything. I mean, these, um, this amount of Banshees uh, can just kill Stalkers so easily. So the amount of anti-air Poison has right now will just not suffice to take down this army. Uh, Mirko just retreats back because the adepts are in her own mineral line, causing some trouble here. So good for poison at that point, that's actually what's keeping Miyako back from pushing further out towards her own bases. Um, she definitely needs a third though, a fourth though, so that's uh, that will cause trouble in the long run. So that's getting taken out, but of course they at least took down some workers, denied mining from the space for quite some time, maybe even killing the supply depot off. But of course Miyako now having four starports out, producing uh, a lot of the high-tech units first four battle cruisers now on the way and even the hyper flight rotors which is uh the movement speed for banshees i thought so being researched an upgrade i don't even see that often nice tag here by poison so now she will always know where her opponent is flying around with her units still won't do her much now she actually sees the battle cruiser if she's looking at the moment but still, it won't help her as much. Uh, it seems if Poison doesn't really know what to do against this, building some photon cannons everywhere in order to grant her some detection against the um, against the um, Banshees once they get cloaked. Even having a stasis ward down here, which will only do her good against ground forces, and I don't think that Miyako wants to throw down more mines anymore. This is actually a good choice, I think, going into the Templar and Psionic Storm tech. Uh, High Templars are actually pretty good against almost all of this. If you feed back Banshees, you can uh, make their cloak go away. Oh, but actually this is... <laughs> not really, is it? My god, Miyako even calculating with this. She just deliberately, uh, she just deliberately put on cloak and then put them out of cloak again and again to just burn off that energy so that High Templar won't be able to feed back these units. My God, what is she thinking? I mean, how did how did my God? This is just like a seventh. This is like like a sixth sense here, like the third eye. I mean, my god, she just wanted to get rid of all the energy on the Banshee so they couldn't get feedbacked. My god, uh, unfortunately you can't really do the same thing with battle cruisers. you have to fire at something using the, the Amado cannon in order to burn the energy. But still, this is just crazy. Okay, taking more and more bases. Ah. Uh, Miyako doesn't doesn't have the Mia tag in her name for nothing. I mean, she's like a cat who likes to play with her food a little bit because right now I don't really think uh, there's anything that Poison can actually do. I mean, she's still getting ground weapons and ground upgrades, still trying to beat this army with a ground army only, which is probably never going to happen. But what can she do? I mean, it's much too late right now. If she had really started uh, going into the air armada, right from the get-go 
it, it might have worked because Miyako is just letting her enough time to build an air army of herself, but of course you can't really know that. If you're in Poison's position, you can't really know what your opponent is up to and if she's going to push you during the next one minute or not. So of course, if you could see into the future, knowing that your opponent will give you five minutes time to build up your own air army, sure you will do it. But if you just saw a scary air army and the only thing you can build is ground, of course you will just try to build more ground units, try to get more upgrades, try to get something on the ground that might be able to contest that. But yeah, it's probably going to be too late once the army hits. And not going to be enough. I mean, with miraculous High Templar hits, maybe some good storms, and maybe even some good feedbacks, it might work, but I don't know. I don't know. Okay, in the meantime, these Banshees have already gathered enough energy up again, so maybe it was... I don't, I don't know what else Miyako was doing there with... Uh, switching it on and off. Uh, again and again. It would only make sense if you just wanted to get rid of the energy so High Templars couldn't feed back you. Everything else just wouldn't make sense. So Mirko just waiting for the 200-200. She's just producing more battle cruisers and ravens. Uh, with ravens she will even have PDDs available and again there, is a, there it is just trying to get rid of the energy so that Templars won't be able to feed back um, the Banshees. Of course they will be able to feed back them but the damage dealt won't be uh, as high. Okay, DT's down here, but there's a Raven in the mix, so DT's won't be an option, and DT's are only good for Resmond anyways, because they can attack air. Yeah, and with a lot of Ravens, she'll even have the chance to throw down PDDs, so if there are a lot of Stalkers in the mix, Stalkers just won't do anything against the air army, because the PDD will just get rid of everything. Okay, this, actually she doesn't really need to, uh, she doesn't really need to uh, attack with these units, but she just uh, takes her Banshees and kills it off as fast as possible, but these uh, few adepts wouldn't really have been able to do much damage over here, but of course she didn't want to risk it, so why not fly it over there. In the meantime, like I said, Poison just trying to get some more uh, upgrades up. Now finally she realizes, well, hmm, it seems as if my opponent doesn't really want to attack me right now, so maybe I get another timing window trying to, th I, I will try to throw down some Stargates and maybe some air upgrades, so maybe I'll be able to get some air units myself. And finally Miyako pushes out with the battle cruisers and the rest of her army. And like I said before, I mean, now they are the Blink Stalkers, Miyako could just easily throw down um, but of course she has to be careful with the storms. Storms can still deal a tremendous amount of damage. But only of course if they not getting picked off before they can even do anything. Yeah, and there it is. I mean, uh, there are the feedbacks trying to uh, get a lot of HP down with uh, from all of these high level units. But there are the PDDs as well. Some more storms as well. Oh, even hitting a good chunk of these ravens over here. Which was really great. But yeah, the rest of the air... Uh, the, rest of the rest of the ground, I mean, just... Just melts away. Uh, okay, at least another some 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 more good storms here. These battle cruisers and the rest of the units are pretty low actually. Here even some stalkers come down. Ooh, no, it's not the mana mules. It's the repairing mules. So don't get it wrong. Uh, trying to repair all of the units with just mules. Yeah, and the the amount that battle cruisers, uh, the amount of damage that battle cruisers actually deal, they have pretty high DPS once you have a few of them, or more like a lot of them. In that case, six. Uh, yeah, still Poison trying to make something happen against these battlecruisers, blinking out, trying to shoot down one battlecruiser at a time. It's the best she can do, but I mean her opponent is on one, two, three, four, five, six bases. Well, not really six because this is mostly out of mind. But uh, even having some bases to spare, and uh, she herself has, has just taken a fourth. The army units she has can't really do any damage to her opponent. She's down 40 supply and her opponent is producing out of four tech labs. No, five actually, never mind. Five star ports with tech labs and uh, one with reactor. So, pff, I mean, there's just nothing she can really do. Uh, having down some more stargates, now trying to get more of uh, the stargate units herself. It's mostly void rays. Uh, void rays being quite good against uh, the battlecruisers, of course. 
with the upgrades. Um, Banshees can't really attack air, so that's not really a big problem. But of course we also have the Ravens with the Hunter Seeker missile. And this might cause a, big of, uh, uh, a bit of a problem for Poison's Voidery based army once it actually gets great enough, because that's still some time before Poison will have enough Void Rays in order to fight against this army head-on, and I don't think that Miyako will give her that time once more. A lot of SCVs and mules repairing down here, trying to get everything up to full health. In the meantime, Poison just having to take a risk once more, tries to take the Gold Nexus over here in order to just get more... Um, in order to just get more, more mineral income, so that she will be able to produce her units a bit more quickly. I think that her opponent is probably going to spot it at some point. It depends. She's checked it at the beginning of the game. It's probably not thinking that her opponent uh, would do it right now. Actually, quite interesting. Uh, no, this, uh, this, um, this watchtower was being held by... Oh, did she see it now? I think the mines just... Yeah, unfortunately for her, the mines just uh, crossed the Zanaga watchtower. And... Uh, by that found the base over here. So a bit unfortunate for Poison here. So more upgrades coming in for Miyako. Uh, not many more upgrades to get there. Uh, also more upgrades coming in for Poison. Of course trying to get the shield upgrade, which is good for flying units and also for ground units. I think one of the best things she can do right now. So another big attack at the fourth base and actually this, uh, the fifth base, sorry. And this base is actually very, very important for Poison. It, it almost has all of its minerals, and now she loses a lot of her income. At the meantime, she herself just uh, warped in. Oh, and now we just saw uh, this little battlecruiser warp in right here, just warping one battlecruiser back to her own base. So while um, Miyako's just moving out with her whole army, uh, Poison did a nice little backstab attack here with some um, zealots that were probably uh, warped in over here. So yeah, even getting some more damage done, she even managed to kill one of the bases down here, one of the spare command centers at least. And now the Void Raids are in there, the Hunter Seeker missiles just firing away at these uh, Void Raids. And that was actually what I was talking about when I got interrupted, that yeah, Void Raids tend to clump up like crazy. And uh, if you then just throw a Hunter Seeker missile in it, everything just dies in an instant. Gra uh, poison just dropping there, uh, under the 100 supply mark for just a bit. Okay, but still holding out strong. Uh, even moving, oh, even just uh, blinking after these um, battle cruisers over there, taking out three more even. So Miyako's air army suddenly has just vanished to poison stalkers over here, who is now going into tempests while Miyako still produces more battlecruiser over here. So finally the last zealot dies over here, but Miyako has actually lost a lot of probes over there. Uh, a lot of a lot of workers over there. 49 SEDs killed during this game. So now of course poor um, Miyako has to be careful not to sacrifice her army like that again, because it still takes some time to get that army up again. Battlecruiser take a hell of a lot of time to build, although not as much time as carriers do. So in the meantime, a little small engagement over here with mines again. <laughs> so yeah, bad, bad for poison. Unfortunately, she just had enough to fight off the air army, but uh, she didn't really have enough to. Um, uh, she didn't. She doesn't now have any detection in her, uh, in her uh, army. So the person cloaking for ghosts going down. So it seems as if Miyako just wants to do a little switcheroo or maybe just uh, getting some ghost units out in order to do some more harassment uh, at different locations. So Miyako now even taking the um, the island base. I uh, haven't seen that uh, as often. So a lot of players just don't take these island bases early on in the game and it's very rare for games to take that long. I think Miyako could have actually killed her opponent even earlier in the game if she just hadn't uh, if she just hadn't aimed to play with her opponent for a little time with the air army. I think she just overdid it a little bit here. So maybe Poison can come back into the game. I mean with another ship uh, in the mix and a few more Tempests. 
That could actually be quite problematic for Miyako. It depends on how fast she can get down the Mothership Core. And if Poison, of course, invests some gas, which she doesn't have, into a High Templar. Because a uh, Tempest High Templar mix is actually very potent against all sorts of armies. So we'll see how this is going to work out. Right now we have 120 army supply to 59 for Miyako. Uh, and she does now have arm, uh, army units that most of the time just shoot up. So let's see if she's going to get all the units down. She has, of course, detection using scans. So no problem with the cloak of the Mothership Core. Mothership Core goes down. The rest of the units are just getting killed. And Miyako takes the second game as well. So, we're back in the third game of this series. We're on Thrust, spawning to the bottom right-hand corner. In green, we have Poison. She's down 0-2, has to win three games in a row against the most scary opponent of the league, who spawned in the top left-hand corner in purple. It's Miyako. Who still hasn't even dropped one map in the season so far. I'm still waiting for one of the ladies showing her that she won't get first place that easily. But maybe, just maybe, we'll have to wait for the away round for that to happen. Or somebody just finds a brilliant cheese that gets through her defenses. But thus far, she seemed to be unbeatable in a normal macro game. I mean, there was one game where Mitsukatsu almost had her in uh, the first game of their series. And then it just went downhill from there, unfortunately, when Miyako started building mass ghosts and sniped all of her ultras and um, air units. Uh, it just turned into a giant slugfest that Miyako finally took and uh, won the game. So I think Mitsukatsu might have been closest thus far, killing off uh, Miyako on one map. But none of the other ladies have managed to do it thus far. So, in the meantime, Poison... Uh, has actually never gone for DTs that f uh, thus far, or only very late inside the game. Uh, although normally she really likes to go for easy DT builds, uh, for, for early, sorry, for early DT builds. And uh, there's the Twilight Council, so we might see her trademark build right in here and now. So let's see if Miyako will be underprepared or not. Uh, in this case, um, yeah, scouting her opponent on the second position, it's cross map. And um, the SUV is probably going to get in. Ah, no, the Adept might keep it from... Yeah, both Adepts will just keep her from scouting. But of course the Twilight Council is right in the back of the base, so if she really puts the uh, Dark Shrine back here, Miyako might just invest a scan uh, in order to see some tech, but she doesn't. It's the Resonating Glaives. So, hmm, we'll see what Poison is going to be up again. Uh, what Poison is uh, really planning. So, there's a missile turret already being built. Uh, Miyako doesn't want to be surprised by any oracles. She didn't really get the, the, uh, the scout she wanted to have with the SEB. So, since she's not quite sure what her opponent is up to, and oracles are always a thing. She just uh, throws down the missile turrets uh, here and there, uh, thus being yeah, quite protected from any oracle play that uh, Poison could throw at her. Although she isn't, but Miyako doesn't know that yet. And of course it also helps against Dark Templars, if they should come. That's always something you have to do if you just don't know what your opponent is up to. You just have to play a little more safe. And, uh, of course, that throws you back economically, and you don't really want to do it, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. 
So, Stim already on the run. Looks as if Miyako just wants to go for a normal three base push, I think, with Marine Marauder and Medivax, it seems. Or maybe only Marines. And maybe a tank thrown in there. Or some mines. Hmm, we'll see what she's up to. Uh, this reactor is probably only for switching the buildings up so that we uh, that she will have double Medivac production in just a short time. In the meantime, we see Poison adding more gateways. There was the scan. Did she see the gateways in the back there? Let's have a look. Yeah, she did. Okay, good scan there by Miyako. Sees actually everything that's coming her way. Um, hasn't seen the Twilight Council researching anymore because resonating lives are already through. And maybe Poison just wants to go for mass adept play inside Miyako's base. And, uh, well, nicely done even here by Miyako, just having that SCV down here for possible warp prism warp ints. And, uh, yeah, once it's going to arrive, so uh, this warp prism will actually get spotted a little bit ahead of time. Uh, even having a supply depot down here, so that it won't be easy to warp in at that latch. Of course, Poison can just move to here and warp it in and here. But, uh, yeah, this, this can actually... Um, be quite helpful in defending these kind of pushes because the units are just stuck behind that depot, have to walk around a little bit and we have the ranged units. But in this case of course it's adapts so they can just shade out and in the meantime uh, just attack with the range themselves. But of course still it might be problematic. And even having a missile turret over here, so Miyako not being quite in place because some of the adapts have been over here. So again a multi-pronged attack, so mass adapt warping over here. The um, um, turret goes down immediately and maybe even the depot and now we have the little problem as you can see now some of the adepts first attack the supply depot before they finally attack the marines but yeah miracle just has too much bio here um, for poison to make something happen killing off all of the adepts before they can even shade and um, yeah again a, unfortunately a failed attack for poison over here the only thing she has left now are a few adepts over here she can't really make anything happen with them this is a tight wall so shades won't really work there are there's a bunker and marines behind it there's marines and medivacs over here and the third base in production plus a cyclone as well so if she actually tries and the cyclone no it's the lock-on and sometimes Miyako even gets the upgrade for the cyclone that does more damage to locked on units in order to really get the war prism uh, if it tries to get clear uh, if it tries to get near to the Terran base so in this case she doesn't but I've seen her do it uh, many times so cyclones now moving out maybe even trying to get the war prism if uh, they see it and if they don't they can just fly over here and try to deny mining with the liberation zones so warp prism just hanging over here do nothing in the meantime we have blink on the way i don't actually know if a stalker blink based army is really the best thing that poison wants to do i mean she might expect liberators and wants uh, to have something against air units but against this amount of bio with um yeah this amount of bio with just um liberators and medivacs for healing stalkers normally just don't cut it i mean you would need insane blink stalker micro and even then you just can't uh, go up against this army. Of course the, the stalkers and the blink will help against the liberators so if she gets a good angle she might be able to shoot down the liberators while her other units uh, keep the bio force busy but if she doesn't she'll just have to jump right um, beneath the liberators right into that bio force in order to make something happen. Yeah like here and then the um, stalkers just get torn down like they do here. What's left are only um, immortals, no AOE damage whatsoever. Most of the adepts have already been killed. Poison just retreats from the third base, lets it die. I think that's a very wise decision because she wouldn't be able to um, make something happen here anyways. So is the first, there's the first um, disruptor out already. So this first disruptor shot might be able to make something happen. But of course she has to, okay, oh, Miyako just loses a big chunk of her bar army there. But now the disruptor of course is useless, getting targeted down. But Miyako even knows that she doesn't really have to do that. She's uh, already built her own third base up. She can take it any minute after she's destroyed um, Poison's income uh, pretty heavily here even trying to take out more of the army that ugh, unfortunately just walks through all of these liberation zones gets out taken completely 30 supply almost 40 supply lead for 
Miyako here. The only thing that stands between the victory uh, right now um, is the... Yeah, her and the victory right now is the Disruptor, that little one Disruptor over here that could land again another big shot. Liberators can't shoot buildings, so she'd be okay for now. So Disruptor shot incoming, uh, but unfortunately it's much too short and much too late. So not really hitting anything, now it's on cooldown once more. Stalkers just against Stim Marines won't just cut it. They have never, um, since the beginning of Wings of Liberty, so no, nothing she can do right here. Disruptor shot's just too short. I think she overestimated the range that a disruptor shot would really have. Unfortunately, she, she, does she have? I think she should have one more in cooldown, right? Only one of them. But yeah, disruptor's just getting focused down. Uh, Poison just tries to warp in more units frantically, but uh, she might even be able to clear off this push finally. But GGG's out since she doesn't have any more eco left and her second base goes down as well. Miyako takes it 3-0.